Okay. Uh, sorry for some minor technical dif difficulties. Uh, Leonardo Vasquez is, uh, due to circumstances beyond his control, he's having to deliver this talk remotely. Uh, so we now have the Zoom link up and running. Uh, I have the honor to introduce him. Uh, Leonardo has uh, two master's degrees and, uh, and is going to talk about uh, type classification. This is a, a traditionally difficult area. Uh, some of you may know that just recently A type I uh, disavowed the Vox classification, which was created by one of our founders. Uh, but Leonardo has been working on the area of classification and uh, believes that he has uh, resolved some of the issues involved, including one of the thornier ones of working with non-Western writing systems. Uh, so I'm very excited to hear what he has to say. So. Thank you, David, for this introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. So um, this is a project that I started uh, several years ago. Uh, last year in October, I presented the theoretical part of this project that now I'm going to present to you as a prototype. Its name is Wikitype. It has to do with all the um, all the all the wiki culture and um, well. Uh, let's start. Okay. So, wiki is a Hawaiian word that means quick. Ward Cunningham, who was one, one of the first um, uh, developers of, of, of this kind of, um, of, um, of uh, online uh, a, a database, he created the wiki wiki web and he described it as the simplest online database that could possibly work. So this might explain um, the name of Wiki Wikipedia and now Wikitype. And as I will be presenting, you will understand why um, did I give it this name. What is Wikitype? Wikitype is a project, a collaborative typeface uh, classification system accessible to anybody. It classifies fonts and families that are used in different languages scripts. The classification scheme is a diagram that helps understand type classification visually. So this diagram allows us to understand the historical lineage, the technology weight and recommended usage according to its very detailed anatomy. It also creates a data bank of information about typography, designers, foundries, historic information, and geographical location that can be shared, collected into a library or printed. It provides a professional understanding of type terms. Um, um, I focused in the development of this prototype in my research in three uh, principal um, topics. One of them was the Vox uh, legacy. Uh, we all know now that what Dos Garald means, or now, for instance, in, 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 in well, I, I, I was thinking in French because um, uh, the terms that he invented have been translated or adapted in all kinds of languages. In, all, in, in every language. So here in Mexico, we say garaldas. Some names are a little bit strange <clears throat> or sound very different than in the original uh, language that was French. And also there was a revisiting of Vox work that was made by Will Hill. He published it in a book that is called um, The Complete Typographer. <clears throat> And up to then, he also mentioned that there was a hole in the classification system. This is something that we already knew for several years now, that there was a hole because uh, but, uh, Vox didn't, uh, couldn't foresee the evolution of technology. And he couldn't foresee also uh, a new 
shapes of, of endings for typefaces through for the next decades. And this is something that we have been seeing lately. And this brings a problem that many of these typefaces can't be classified with that model. So this is understandable. That this is one of the reasons that Atypy dropped this classification system um, approximately three years ago, more or less. The second great idea that uh, this, pro this uh, prototype is um, based on is the writing theory from Jared Northside. I think that this in the typography philosophy or typography culture is one of the most important and transcendent ideas that has to do with writing and typography. Because the main idea that I can extract from this uh, principle is that typography first was a written form. First uh, was a writing, then it became calligraphy when it uh, try to become, become more aesthetic and become a more um, beautiful or handsome made through technique. But the principles about uh, writing, the idea of uh, translation and expansion is present almost or mostly in every uh, script. Um, I myself as a practitioner of Shodo of Japanese calligraphy or Chinese calligraphy, I would add the, a third um, area or a third concept in the theory of writing that might be rotation. This third concept may explain shapes of uh, other scripts uh, beyond Latin. It's very important also to understand that if we want to make better designers, we need to use professional type language. And this is something that is sometimes is better is uh, difficult to understand because of the um, translations that have been made through the years and through uh, countries uh, about the same term. This is something that um, Catherine Dixon uh, mentions in his uh, essays. Um, I, I I propose or or the um, or this system is centered uh, in using um, professional type. Uh, parameters, type names, type naming, no folksonomy. What is folksonomy? The names that users or people uh, give to shapes that they find um, accurate. For instance, uh, um, we can search in Google uh, solemn typefaces. Uh, what, do that, what do these mean? No? Uh, what is a solemn, what does the concept solemn or fun or or awkward or brutalist, etc. This is no, this is, I mean, uh, profession, um, typography has a very precise um, um, amount of words that can describe very precisely any shape that we, that we know, that we design. And the last, um, um, the last um, object of study that was very important for this prototype was a document that was published by the Parson Journal for Information Mapping. It's a studying naming frequency. Um, all of this is complete, is more was more explained in the session that I had in Atypy last year. Um, and well, the, 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 um, this is a, pro a very uh, extensive document with a lot of research and information about the history of the Western alphabet and the impact in the culture in our societies and well these are the main ideas and um, where I started to build the Wikitype. Well Wikitype considers five axis is a five axis system that considers language or scripts the purpose they see web or print as a, as a first um, as a first category technology this is important I will explain this furthermore type description, of course, and history. The next diagram shows the semantic space created by all, the, by, by all these four axes together, and every topic about typography happens in this space. This is a semantic field where typography takes place. All typefaces designed up to now um, are a mixture of all these fields, all of them. So 
we can define very precisely a typeface uh, according or using each one of these fields, but also if we mix all of them together. What if we could think about this uh, type classification in a timeline? As I said before, uh, Vox never thought that there might be new technologies. And of course, then uh, new shapes or endings for typographies. So he was stuck in a formal vision of typography with um, shapes that we know, uh, the empattement or the serifs or the endings uh, that we know and that we know very well that were in use since 1960 something up to 2021, I think, that it was when it was dropped from a typei. So this was what we were teaching in schools throughout the world, the Vox classification. And of course, as you may, as you as you can imagine, there were thousands of typefaces that were completely excluded from this classification. So as I was saying, uh, think about using this five axis in a timeline. And if we put ourselves uh, in the, the start of the timeline, or it says past, um, and if we put it in this, in, in that axe, in that, um, yes, in that, in that um, line, we would see something like this. This is a complete system. This is um, each one of the colors represent one of the, of the fields of typography. So we can see the script, the sources. This I am using a little bit of the uh, terms that Catherine Dixon used in her essays, in, in her um, in her work, technology. Technology is important because it might give us the whole history of a typeface. There are typefaces that are the classical ones. I am going to say like uh, the black uh, Gothic letter, the one that was used by Gutenberg in the, with, the, with the printing of the Bible. And that's why I divided um, this uh, technology area in two parts. The legacy, this is the technology that we no longer use or that is uh, completely out, not completely outdated because it, it's uh, now it's like an artistic form of, of expression. Um, and we are still teaching this in our schools to understand a lot of um, technicalities about uh, editorial design, for instance. So we have wood, metal, and photo, photo composition. But metal, we have movable type, the machine monotype, and the linotype. But in the digital parameters, we had bitmap, true type, postscript, and multiple master. At the time that I was making the research, these technologies were alive. So now we only have open type, web fonts, and variable fonts. I decided, I decided to leave them because there are some typefaces today that have uh, uh, traveled um, mostly all the line in, te in technologies. Um, just to say the typographies from the 17th century, for instance, they have traveled, they were adapted, they have been uh, adjusted, they have been uh, completely remade, redesigned. And this is part of the history of a typeface. So then we have the history, this is mostly the Vox uh, classification with some tweaks over here and there. And then we have the purpose. Um, by definition, the purpose of typography, of course, must be oh, or can be web or print. But in both cases, there are typefaces designed for text titling or ornamental um, uh, purposes. Text is has the... the subcategory of optical because we know now with 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 variable fonts that we can play uh, also with titling but anyway we can play with optical sizes <clears throat> so the sources um, color or the sources area plays along with this um, violet circle that is called patterns patterns are like the tiny, tiny, tiny um, uh, repetitions of, of elements that are always present in any typeface. This is 
um, constructed, or this was thought, like many of the recipes that we can find in a type cooker. Um, so if we can give uh, someone through a type cooker uh, the, all the instructions to build a typeface, we can also use this, uh, all these language, all these terms to describe it. There are many others. Uh, the thing also is that terms, uh, uh, Catherine Dixon is very precise. She's very precise when she says that term, term, um, type, term, type terms are very, need to be very uh, precise when describing typefaces. And the problem is that it, they vary from country to country. So it's not the same thing to say, I don't know, uh, a black letter in, or, or, or grotesque in France or in England or in the United States, and of course in Spain or in Latin America. So here <laughs> it says that we have the, um, the prototype. I'm going to change my window. I'm going to step sharing here, stop sharing here, and I'm going to share another window. Someone tell me how much time do I have left, please? Okay, this is a prototype that might show how Wikitype works. This is a place built in Figma, like a like a web, like a web page. And well, how it works. So let's go over there. This is what I just uh, explained to you. Wikitype is a place where you can learn, classify, and use uh, an, or search typographies. This is the same thing. One important thing is that this was built in Spanish. So um, you are going to find many terms here in Spanish. Uh, I, I didn't um, dare to translate all of it all by myself because I no, I think this has to be done by specialists and and to use the correct term in a in an, an amount um, uh, grade of, of the population that could be accepted for many people. So how it works anyway, this is the explanation I just gave you. Definitions. Of course, Wikitype has to have definitions about type terms. This is only a showing, an example. But the most important thing is the font gallery. So as I said in the beginning, if we take in consideration um, Jared Northside's theory of writing, we can explain all, all kinds of scripts through this theory. We can find expansion or translation and rotation in a North Bengali regular or in Adele sans Chinese. All these typefaces, um, I'm very uh, glad to say that were um, provided or Yes, or, uh, by Type Together. Thank you, Type Together. Their, their library is amazing. So let's start. Let's see how it works. Each one of these um, menus represents one of the circles uh, of, the, of the areas that I showed you in the beginning. For instance, now I'm going to put Cyrillic. What's the purpose? Okay, text, technology. Okay, I want to see the digital typeface. Watch, uh, let's choose a history. Let's say um, transition. What are going to be the sources? Um, I want this to be a serif. And then the patterns I'm going to choose uh, with, or sorry, stroke. And if I do this, this is the only typeface that has all these considerations uh, applied. There is a quick view of the system. This is the way it looks with all these um, uh, boxes um, checked, but we can see it more deeper, more profoundly. We can have here the type classification in all of the five uh, areas. We can see all the detail about the, with the patterns, with the tiny, tiny bits of the typeface. We can have here at the, at the left, uh, we can see a, dis a description of the typeface, uh, how it was, who designed it, why, how was it designed, etc. And if we click here in Type Together, we are sent immediately to the to the to the site of the Type Foundry, and we can share it. This is something that I like a lot because um, <laughs> this 
is completely linked with social media. So people share what they have as a breakfast or people share something that they find in Pinterest. Why not can we share typefaces through the universe of the metaverse? And one thing that I like a lot is that we can have a collection of projects. So for instance, I want this typeface to my project magazine. We go here to my projects. We have a collection of typefaces that we love, that we like, that we're searching or we're trying to use for a magazine or for whatever whatever project that we're going to use. And for instance, uh, LFT Etica, I don't like it anymore. Um, I'm going to take it out and we can take it out. This works more or less like the um, I like it or not from Spotify, for instance. And we can go back to Font Gallery. We can see all the quick views of all these typefaces. So if you can see, for instance, here, I'm going to click here. In this case, Adele sounds Chinese. This typeface concretely, Adele, has, um, it has been designed for all these languages, Hebrew, Chinese, Arab, Cyrillic, Latin, or Devanagari. This, here we're seeing Chinese for obvious reasons, but if we click here, this is only a prototype, we cannot, we can, it, I am going to show you how it works, but we can go to the, to the name of the typeface that should appear here in the font gallery, sorry, here. We can see it displayed here on the bottom. So we just have to go and click and we can see exactly how many languages uh, the, this typeface is classified or it has been designed in how many scripts. So, um, it's almost the same thing. I mean, the, this is the way it works. Of course, it works for Latin scripts. It was, it was, it was um, designed for Latin. But the most interesting thing is that when I thought about another script, it worked. For this, it was very uh, important uh, to talk with the designers. Designers, the, the guys that designed this typeface, for instance, um, well, I didn't uh, uh, wrote myself here with Liron Lavi, but I I talked with Veronica or with Jose in some other typefaces because not everyone answered the mail I sent. And they uh, answered my questions. For instance, uh, Sara Afshar, I asked her many questions about what is the contrast of the typeface, how is it done, etc. Uh, this is we have a, a direct feedback from the people that design the typeface. And this is very important because at the end, we can, let me show you that when we sign up, well, here you put your email, your password, et cetera, but we can have profiles of user. We can have students, we can have teachers, and we have professionals. When you're a professional, you are um, you have um, you are we, you have the right or the credentials to be an editor, like Wikitype, Wiki Wikipedia. When you're an editor, you have to verify that you are an editor, and you can classify your own typefaces. This is very important because all typeface designers understand the typographic terms. Uh, the type cooker, the Jerry Nortzik, uh, um, the Jerry Nortzik um, theory of writing, and there might be, of course, typefaces. Uh, sorry, there might be, of course, typefaces that are completely new. So, of course, these typefaces. This is only a showing. No, this might show all the new typefaces that have been classified up to this this moment. But all these new typefaces, for instance, um, this is why I, I was explaining the historical component deeply, because for obvious reasons, they were not made for wood or for metal. These are typefaces that are designed from the 2000 of 2010 up to now. Um, they are completely digital. I mean, um, they were created by vector that's what i wanted to say they don't come from metal or wood and this might explain all these sh uh, shapes uh, or this uh, complete a new canon of the roman alphabet so um the font gallery i'm going to finish with it 
uh, shows an array of all the typefaces classified. You can have a quick view, or as I said, you can have it a full view here. Something interesting is that all of the small check marks that you make in the classification give gives data, and this data can be graphic. Uh, can be made become in a graphic, so you can you can put in numbers or in a statistic or in in information design. How many typefaces are registered and from which countries, if they are text or not uh, text or etc. All that you can, all the input that we are putting here can be uh, used to make a, a information design over here. At the end, of course, we have a blog and all these kind of things that we need to make a, a site work. For instance, of course, the the, spot, the partners, people that would like to send us their typefaces or people that, uh, so, or companies that would like to help in one way or another. And you can subscribe to our newsletter, et cetera, and of course, social media. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to come back to my other, okay. Okay. So this was uh, the, the small prototype from Wikitype. <laughs> um, and now, c'est le moment de remerciement. Uh, first of all, I would like to, well, these are the team. They are the team, the people that I've been working with. Pilar Morones from Guadalajara, Aline Enrique, she's, she's helping us with the marketing stuff inside the page, and the programmer, Ever Josias. And finally, I would like to thank a lot at Taipei for the opportunity to show this prototype in this in more evol evolved uh, presentation. I, I, I'm looking forward to have your feedbacks. Uh, to, uh, the team, of course, Tammy and, and all the people that are making this possible. Thank you very much. Tap together, of course, because uh, they believed in this project and they uh, furnished me with the their typefaces to be classified. Um, I would like to, to classify all their catalog completely in order to feed the, feed the wiki type. Of course, the school where I studied, this is a, this is a multidisciplinary or a transdisciplinary project. Uh, many of these ideas come from the study of um, of uh, art or 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 um, Abby Warburg, they, they, this was the the Menosine. No, I forgot the name, but anyway, what I learned here is to see things in different angles. So it was very important for me to realize that everything was that we could, it could be dissected in layers, and of course. The Asociación Mexicana de Tipografía, which I represent, that will become my, my platform to promote Wikitype through the schools and university in Mexico. So just to finish, um, please drop me a line if you like the project, if you would like to, to know more. Um, it was a real pleasure to be uh, presenting here this with you. I hope um to see you soon <laughs> somewhere in, in maybe next atai pai thank you very much yes and thank you very much leonardo yes we we uh, we got a late start so we ran over a little bit but uh right. if you have questions please email leonardo and uh we should move right into the next presentation Thank you.